guys. Good morning. I'm the Clapper Loader. And without me, you're on no film. I say good morning because it's 5 o'clock in the morning. And I just finish, finished watching Mike Flanagan's Midnight Mass. And I already put in the title that there was going to be a spoiler alert. There, there are spoil, thousand percent spoilers. So please, I would suggest if you have not watched Midnight Mass on Netflix, well, hopefully you have Netflix to watch it. But if you have not watched the miniseries, I suggest you watch it first because although um, I, I, oh, never, no matter what I say here, let me find my words at five in the morning. Um, I will, su I suggest you watch it. And once you watch it, obviously please come back and see if our minds meet up. I've heard, I, I started to believe that, um, yeah, so. What we're going to do here is put a spoiler alert sound effect so that you know that from here on out, I will be um, talking about Midnight Mass with spoilers. Okay, guys, I, I've, I dozed off on I don't know what episode and I woke up to this noise in the same episode literally two minutes later but it took me sadly four episodes before I was even interested before I was even thinking why are we here what are we doing where are we going Mike Flanagan's Midnight Mass is an absolute mess as someone who has a small bit of experience writing screenplays. The first thing that they teach you to do is to tighten up your story. No first drafts, no second drafts. You tighten that story up till it's just, a, a quarter could bounce off of your story as if it were a sheet on a um, military person's bedding. A tight story. Somehow, I don't believe Midnight Mass was a tight story. It's a mess. It is an absolute mess. But let me give credit to where credit is due. The acting was superb. The acting was amazing. I felt for every character. I understood every character. I understood their motivations. Every character. If anything, this was had great character development and it was a great character study i understood everybody i understood the motivations i've even let's say met a few people like some of the characters in the miniseries but just coming from okay so most of my reviews or look backs i'm coming back from from a writing standpoint and this was just, I, I'm really sorry, guys. I'm sorry if you liked it. I'm sorry if you liked it and that we don't agree on it. Um, but there's no way in heck I'm going to watch this ever again. And it's sad because it almost seems like a waste. It was an interesting story, interesting premise. Interesting everything. And now I feel like, ugh. Actually, I feel like I've been to someone's funeral because it was such a downer at the end. Focus your writing. Yeah, that's what I was taught in my writing classes. You gotta know your ending. Know your middle, know your, and then obviously know your beginning. And tighten that stuff up so there's not all this excess. What I felt was left in Midnight Mass was a bunch of excess. 
all this stuff that just didn't need to be there. It's like filler, gas, bloating. Oh, okay. To Mike Flanagan's credit, I loved Dr. Sleep. Except the ending. Now, I would reverse the fact that I love Dr. Sleep. And I can I can watch it more than once. If we switch the endings out with this ending, maybe it would be a better movie. Maybe Midnight Mass and Dr. Sleep Midnight Mass together would be a great mashup to do. But as of right now, Midnight Mass is a story-wise disappointment. Acting-wise, awesome. (sighs) Back in the 90s, we had, like, heavy influences from network TV. And Stephen King was already, like, a household name, of course, at the time. And so this miniseries took me back way back into the 90s with all of the miniseries um, that series is that um, ABC did with Stephen King's work. So there was like, obviously it, you remember that, or if you know of it now, it was a previous miniseries before. Um, there's some other ones that you probably don't know of. One of them is called the Tommy Knockers. The other is called the Langoliers with David Morse. Because I, I'm a fan of David Morse. Um, we also have Storm of the Century with um, Colm Frior. If you don't know Colm Frior's work, look him up. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He 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 fit, He's an everyman kind of guy. He fits into everything. And then when you read the credits, you're like, oh, that's I know I know that guy. So Colm Frior, who I particularly know him from, um, Riddick Chronicles of Riddick. And then there's Rose Red. And so all of these were mini series about six hours in length, like three night events. They would split them up into a two hour TV movie per night, I believe. Some of them might have been shorter, maybe four hours. Some of them, most of them were around six hours. And I remember specifically with Rose Red. Oh my God, what drivel that. That was so disappointing. And it's like, it got you revved up because you kept thinking you're going to solve this mystery. There's a mystery to be solved, right? Each one of these stories are Stephen King. Well, there's something's going going on. Something's going to happen. And I would say the only one that I... Well, no, there were two. I totally forgot about The Stand. The Stand, I appreciated. It was well done. And the ending is good. It stuck the landing. The second one that stuck the landing to me, kind of in a haunting way, was Storm of the Century. Now, if you don't know anything about Storm of the Century, I'm not going to spoil it for you here. It is worth a look. I do feel like the ending pays off. I feel like the ending pays off here in Midnight Mass as well, but the, but it just took so long to get to it. I mean, by the time we're four episodes in, I'm feeling like, I could have just started at episode four and just went to the end, five, four, five, six, seven, and why? I just don't understand how come they didn't tighten that story up. I don't think there was anything in those latter episodes that needed to not be tightened up, even the ending itself. So. I'm so disappointed. You have no idea. Here I am. I thought I was going to tackle this. <laughs> this, because I was getting super excited. Everyone had been talking about it, reviewing it, saying how great it was. And I'm like, I'm on board. Let's do the Midnight Mass. Because that, that poster or that, what I see is like this guy. He could be Joaquin Phoenix ish but it's not Joaquin Phoenix playing a priest and the priest looks kind of smarmy with his greasy hair looks kind of old-fashioned and looks too slick to be a priest you can see something's going on behind the eyes and then 
you have well his his face is the one I remember the most. So I think it has absolutely no rewatchability factor whatsoever. There's no reason to go and dive into that storyline once again because you know the ending and there was nothing intriguing about it along the way that kept you going, oh, this is really cool. I want to see this part. As a matter of fact, there was a scene, the scene where the dad had the letters from Riley and he was handing them to the priest and the priest opened one of the letters and I have my Netflix subtitles on in French and I didn't catch what was written on the paper my angle of looking at the tv it just didn't work and so I didn't catch that and I looked at the subtitles and by the time I looked at the subtitles it was super quick I couldn't read it I didn't even care because I thought I'm not intrigued by this whatsoever now were there some really interesting points of course when riley got killed that was incredible at the end of the episode when riley came back at the beginning of the episode that was cool but the middle part was dragging and then the end and the oh my god look um I, I don't, Mike Flanagan has lost me. If he can do another Doctor Sleep but fix that ending, then he would be on my list of, you know, directors to watch. But as of right now, I am not interested in anything else that he does. And I would just rather go and watch Salem's Lot from 1979. Stephen King again reference, which to me was a way better, a way better um, horror tale than this because the story was tight. I know it was based on a book, but I'm telling you, the story was tighter. And it, there was kind of a similar thing going on. You had a guy that was, I don't know. There were differences, but there were similarities. I like the similarities between Salem's Lot and Midnight Mass. The differences, Midnight Mass can go go away and I will definitely watch Salem's Lot over and over and over again because it's really good. It was really well done for, I mean, obviously it's an old, it's an older film. So, um, yeah, I I cannot recommend Midnight Mass for more than one viewing, one viewing to get it out of the way so that you can say that you saw it so that you can even maybe like it yourself or find interesting things about it. But after that, uh, I think it's going to sink back into the, the the outer regions of Netflix and we're going to be moving on to the next thing hopefully with a better script okay guys that is my kind of analysis review rant about Mike planning is midnight mass now all seven episodes of the miniseries are available on Netflix and here's good luck to you guys in watching it and you know I am the clapper loader. Without me, there are no films.